Southeast Week, presented by Lowe's. Jim Maui Invitational, this gorgeous setting here in Hawaii. And oh, by the way, what a heck of a basketball game coming your way right now. A top 10 matchup, number eight Auburn and number one Duke. How much fun is this going to be in this gym, which is hot and packed and ready to go? A look at the bracket right now with Arizona and Gonzaga coming your way next. These are the semifinals. The winners today will meet in the championship game tomorrow here in Lahaina. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Maui. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis having a heck of a time. Hoping you're enjoying the coverage of the games from out here. And a lot of eyeballs on Duke and that freshman quartet that was awfully good in their win yesterday. They were beyond awfully good. This, this quartet has been fantastic. And it's not just been Zion Williamson. He's gotten all the headlines because of his dunking ability, how explosive he is, frankly, how good he is and unique. But Cam Reddish, R.J. Barrett, Trey Jones have been spectacular. And Cam Reddish is as good a shooter as you're going to find in college basketball at 6'8". And R.J. Barrett is basically James Harden out there with his ability to get to the basket. But Williamson just seems to get all of the attention because of the things that he can do. So when he gets these steals and he got five of them in the opening game against San Diego State, he throws it down in highlight fashion seemingly every single time. He is ahead of the dunk record at Duke set last year by Marvin Bagley III. And he is going to rattle rims all year long. But it's going to be an incredible test against a very good Auburn team that's very athletic. An extremely good Auburn team that actually needed overtime to beat Xavier yesterday and needed their veteran backcourt to deliver that win in overtime. This is an excellent backcourt. They can defend, and they're very good on the offensive end. Bryce Brown at 26 points against Xavier, an excellent three-point shooter and one of the better defenders that you're going to see on the ball. One of the best defenders not only in the Southeastern Conference but in the country. And those 26... Auburn needed every one of those, and he can attack the basket as well. You basically cannot leave him. And Jared Harper, the junior, he is 5'9", if he's even a foot. How about that dunk? Zion Williamson, come on, man. And he did it off the floater. He made big play after big play in overtime, and in the second half had 25 points and eight assists. You got to make him finish. For more on tonight's big game, let's bring in the third member of our team, Oahu native, Maui resident, Kanoa Leahy. That's right, the token Maui resident here on the <laughs> broadcast team. Dan Jay, clearly the many NBA scouts who came to Maui are here primarily to see the Duke freshman in action. But I talked to one scout and asked, who stood out the most on the first day of the tournament? The response, perhaps surprisingly, the Auburn guards, talking about Brown and Harper. This scout didn't really know much about them before he got here, was impressed with their playmaking ability, and thinks it's going to be interesting to see how the Blue Devils fare with a backcourt that has that kind of experience and tenacity. All right, Kanoa, thank you. And if you're Auburn, how excited are you to maybe knock off number one, something that the Tigers have only done once in program history. They are 1-11 all time against the top-ranked team in the nation. A look at the Duke starting five, and it's the same group. The four freshmen and then Marquise Bolden in the middle. The four freshmen have been on the court for 40 minutes together this season, and they're plus 45. They've outscored the opposition by 45 points in those 40 minutes. Duke and White, Auburn and Orange, and the Tigers with the opening possession of the game. And this is Jared Harper, the guy that Jay was talking about, who had such a magnificent performance, especially in overtime in yesterday's win. Well, he's being guarded right now by the freshman Trey Jones. But you're going to see this Duke team switching one through four. Brown. Gets an open look at a three, in and out, and the rebound down to Williamson, and here come the Blue Devils. And what a move to start the game by Bryce Brown. Just didn't make the open shot. Barrett with a drive and lays it in. R.J. Barrett. That is the difficulty when you play Duke. How do you keep this team out of the lane? You have to keep Duke out of transition. 
and keep them out of the lane. Make them into a jump shooting team. That's a difficult thing to do. And Duke's so long, they've got a length advantage in so many spots on the floor. Brown again. In and out, offensive rebound, and missing on the follow is Chuma Okiki. Here's where Duke is really difficult to deal with. Four different guys can rip and go after they grab a rebound, so they're they don't have to make an outlet pass. You know, one pass from R.J. Barrett to Cam Reddish, all of a sudden you got a three. How do you guard that? Reddish, who had 16 yesterday, an early three, and Auburn 0 for 4 from the field, 0 for 3 from three-point range in the first minute and a half and they can live and die by the three. It's a very big part of their offense. Well, it is their offense. I mean, they, they're, they mostly live by it. Williamson turns it over and then commits the foul. Now, Duke has gotten three rebounds thus far in this game, and three different players have brought it up. R.J. Barrett taking it to the bucket. you got to keep him out of the middle. Easier said than done and then Barrett brings it up and immediately the early pass to Cam Reddish and you got to pick him up Right across half court. He's got tremendous range The Tigers started off cold oh. against Xavier, but they're hot right now What a feed from Harper into Anthony McLemore to break the ice and now a steal and a lay-in for Harper And the Tigers all of a sudden back within one they're very alert after the score to get that steal off the inbounds Reddish Got it back. And launches a three, not there. And down to the rebound to McLemore. And now the Tigers with a bit of jump in their step. Floater. Too strong off the window. Bit of a rush shot at the other end by Cam Reddish. But this is what we bargained for in this one. Up and down, super athletic. Just slips it. There's nobody in the lane. Everybody a little man-oriented. Zion Williamson should have been there to try to take that away and then the quick inbound pass steal and score well, that's just great basketball by Auburn very well executed and this is what the Tigers are try to first force turnovers offensive last shoot threes Jack White is into the game now for Duke as Williamson who picked up that early foul for the second game in a row he gets a trip to the bench reddish into some traffic and that's an offensive foul Duke got into a little bit of early foul trouble against San Diego State in the opening round of this tournament. And you certainly don't want to see that against a, a more potent offensive team in Auburn if you're Mike Krzyzewski and his staff. Again, Auburn ranked number eight in the country. They were a tournament team last year, very highly thought of, their highest preseason ranking this year in almost 20 years, and an experienced team. Brown misses again. Remember, he started off slowly against Xavier. He is going to keep shooting. R.J. Barrett for three. He's got five in the early going. And Dan, that's the weakest part of R.J. Barrett's game. And it's not weak. It's just weaker than his super strengths. And he really is a lot like James Harden. Barrett, Harper needs to, he needs to drive this matchup. Got Jack White on him. He drives him, scoops it up, rejected by Bolden. Boy, Harper thought he had enough room. He did not. Well, that's really what you have to do with Harper is make him finish. You want to stay with Bryce Brown and make the smaller Jared Harper into a finisher near the basket when you can bother that shot or as Marquise Bolden just did, block it. You were talking before the game with the recent guys back in the studio about Williamson and Barrett and how great Williamson is. And you said, but, quote, R.J. Barrett is the best player on this Duke team. I think he is. I mean, it, it, look, they can have a best player at four different spots in a given game. Good cut by Cam Reddish. And he draws the foul. Right, when you stay spaced out like Duke does, it gives you great opportunities for a basket cut. If you're closely guarded, you can just step and go. And it not only will give you an opportunity to score on the cut, but it gives a teammate an opportunity to get open on the perimeter. So Williamson on the bench right now for Duke with one foul. That Auburn foul went on Samir Doughty. That is his second foul. And that'll be a loss here for the Tigers as he's going to have to come out. And it'll be Malik Dunbar, the senior from North Augusta, South Carolina, who comes in to take his place. Malik Dunbar is an athletic, physical presence that will fight you at every turn. And Williamson back in for Duke. Reddish comes into the game averaging 16 and a half points per game. A terrific three-point shooter, but 
more than just a shooter. A guy who we've seen can get out in transition and get to the rim a little bit as well. And he and Barrett have combined for all 10 of Duke's points. Yeah, Reddish can do everything. He, he's probably been underrated. Well, it's like if you're the Beatles, you know, McCartney and Lennon get the headlines, and but George Harrison were pretty damn good, too. And that's it feels like Reddish is that right now. Left hand. Williamson taps it back out, but a fresh possession now for Auburn. And George Harrison made a lot of money, too. <laughs> Brown, the kick. Bryce, Bryce Brown stepped out. He must have stepped out of bounds going there, and he can't be the first to touch it if he steps out of bounds, not forced out. Timeout on the floor. Duke up by six in the early going. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Maui Gym Polarized Plus 2 Sunglasses. The view's better from here. And Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. You're asking to be tested. You're asking to find out how good we are as a group, how good we are as a team. What are our strengths and what are our weaknesses, okay? Where do we, where do we go from here? Right now, we're in the Final Four. This is, a, this is as good a field as this is in the Final Four. Okay, there aren't many better teams in the country than this team right here. If we win this basketball game, we will make history. We'll send a message. We'll be representing the names in the front of the jersey. Uh -huh. We'll be writing the names in the back of the jersey. Uh -huh. You're not going to get this opportunity very often in your life. Let's take full advantage of this opportunity right here. Right here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, man. Family on three. Family on three. One, two, three. Let's go. Man, kind of makes you want to run through a wall, doesn't it? He's good at that. Boy, before every game, he's got the veins popping out of his neck, and he's not going to find much more passionate pregame speeches than Bruce Pearl. First time that he's ever coached against Mike Krzyzewski. You saw that Auburn as a program is 1-11 all-time against the number one team of the nation. Bruce Pearl's got a couple of wins against the number one team of the nation. Did that uh, back when he was at Tennessee, once against Kentucky, and once against Memphis in a number two versus number one game that we had some years ago. He is fired up. His players are fired up for the opportunity in front of them today against Duke. So many different ball handlers out on the floor for Duke. Auburn trying to ice those side ball screens to keep it on the same side it starts on. Barrett, too strong on the three. Rebound, Williamson. And down with it for Auburn is Austin Wiley, the junior from Hoover, Alabama. And we got another foul going against Duke. It is Reddish, and that is his second. Probably not the smartest play. I mean, you want to try to jam the outlet, but that's not, you don't want to pick up a foul that far away from the basket. And especially this early in the game to go out with two fouls. And Jack White is back in. White can come in basically for anybody on the court with the interchangeable parts that Duke has in the lineup. But again, Reddish with two. Williamson's got one. They've got decent depth, but they don't want to lose too many of these guys too early. Okiki inside, tipped away by Javin Delorier. And Wiley's got to hold Delorier off. Terrific play to knock it away. Barrett! Everything but the finish comes down to Jones. And Delorier kept that rebound alive. Jones left hand. How about that? Talk about another freshman in this class that's been a little bit under-publicized. 14 points against Xavier. Terrific floor game. I think he only missed one shot. Yep. Ray Jones was excellent in that game. He went six for seven, knocked down both of his threes. Dunbar for three. And right now, Auburn cannot buy a jump shot. 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. White with a rebound has it swatted away though when the back come the Tigers. That's some interesting matchups on the floor right now. Williamson's on Bryce Brown inside Okiki, who Bruce Pearl says has the highest ceiling of anybody on the team. Well, he's a pro. SEC player of the week. He's an NBA player. So energetic. He so many different things. You can move him all over the floor as well. Delorier kicks it to his roommate, the other co-captain on the team, and Jack White knocks down the three. Jared Harper helped off 
to try to stop that drive by Javon Delorier. He overhelped. You cannot help off a ball side corner shooter. You just can't. You're giving up the easiest three point shot in basketball. Bryce Brown. Not close. Wiley with a finish. And Delorier's out ahead of the pack and lays it in. Brown was yelling because it wasn't his guy. Somebody's got to get him. Nobody got him. If you're yelling, somebody's got to get him. You better get you him gotta yourself because go nobody's yeah. coming. <laughs> and you're used to seeing Duke get out and get down the court quickly in transition with a dribble. That time they go over the top of the pass. Auburn trying to lift Duke up and then attack the defense. And it's been basically an, an excellent offensive rebounding team in Auburn has been one and out. Barrett again. He shoots a good ball when he takes his time and gets his feet set. Auburn looking to score in a hurry. They want to play at a fast pace as well. Out of bounds, Duke ball. Now take a look at take a look at Jared Harper here. Jared Harper helps off and is not able to get back. You can't help off a corner shooter. And Jack White continues to play at a very high level here in his junior season for Duke. Bolden is back in for the Blue Devils. Alex O'Connell has checked in as well. And off the Auburn bench comes Javon McCormick, a guard. Barrett has it knocked away by Harper. And it's out of bounds to Duke. Bruce Pearl, first of all, saying it was a foul on Barrett, and second of all, saying it should be Auburn ball. One, yeah, of the, one of the really difficult things, Dan, to deal with when you're playing against Auburn is inbounding the ball, especially in that kind of spot. You're usually going up against a lot more size than Malik Dunbar. But oftentimes, Bruce Pearl put a big guy, and it's hard to get the ball in. There's a small lineup for Auburn. Jones is fouled on the drive. Jones showing, looking for his offense quite a bit here in the early going today. Well, there's nothing selfish about looking for your offense and looking for your shot. Selfishness is taking bad shots. But when you're looking to score, that makes you a, a more difficult player to guard. When all five guys are looking to score, that's a good thing. Jones, the freshman from Apple Valley, Minnesota. And the brother of Tyus, who won a national championship with Duke four years ago. So far on the season, and the season is very young, 24 assists and just five turnovers coming into the game today for Trey Jones. And really remarkable for a freshman to have those kind of stats. You know who else has stats like that as far as assistant turnovers? Brandon Williams from Arizona, who we'll see in the next game against Gonzaga. What a rebound. Another one, and this one, Dowdy has it bothered by White, and again, Auburn with a ton of chances. They just can't put the ball in the basket. Bolden can. What a foul by the big man running the floor. Floater by Harper, way short. Well, Duke is just so explosive. With three offensive rebound opportunities, a blocked shot, then... An offensive rebound on the other end. And how do you stop that? How do you stop him when he wants to get to the rim? They just score so easily. I mean, they're just under 12 minutes to go in the first half. They've got 22 points, about to make it 23 if R.J. Barrett makes a th finishes a conventional three-point play. A great driver of the basketball and has a, a unique knack for making shots. Maybe not. It's James Harden unique. now I watched the 100 right now last movie you saw last movie I saw was Black Panther first uh, worst dancer on the team <laughs> the worst dancer probably be uh, Jab and Jack all right the best dancer on the team
you you actually think a kid is going to do an impression of the person who controls his playing time? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, because he's not going to play <laughs> if he does not <laughs> uh, I tell you, the one thing I've learned since we've been out here in Hawaii, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is like everybody's favorite. They're yes. getting so much free advertising. I'm a little place. surprised. I thought Captain Crunch would have been, a, or it's Cap'n Crunch, Captain Crunch yeah. would have been a, a higher up on the list. When I was a kid, Cap'n Crunch was the, the way to go. It, the roof of your mouth was raw after eating <laughs> That's it. That's right. I think Lucky Charms was a very strong answer. Meanwhile, trouble for Auburn. Dowdy's now got three fouls. Harper and Brown, the guys who make them go, their two terrific guards, had 51 points yesterday between them against Xavier. They're one for 11, two points so far today. Let's check in with Kanoa Leahy. Guys, Bruce Pearl challenged his players in that last timeout huddle. It wasn't about shot selection. He basically told them, hey, look, you came here to play. I came here to coach. We need to finish. We need to be competitive. We need to challenge these guys. The players seem to receive it well. We'll see if it pays off. Well, not a, a great look out of that timeout as McLemore put up a very quick three. And he can shoot that, but he missed it badly. And so, I think that's what's strange. They're, they're not even close on these three-point attempts, right? Now. Well, they haven't. You know, I would differ with Bruce on that one. I, th I think they've taken some poor shots in this one, some quick shots. And I think they're capable of getting much better ones. Now, they're going to start shooting the ball better because that's what they do as Malik Dunbar knocks that down. That was taken in rhythm, and it was taken coming up where he could plant his feet off a little, little down screen. They ran so they run a lot of flex action, old Dr. Tom Davis, Gary Williams stuff. Their first made three in nine attempts today, 22-11 Duke. White from the corner, not there. Down with a rebound to McLemore, and Auburn looks to push. Good pass ahead. And another good look. This one a little bit short, kept alive. McCormick inside. Brown from the corner. He needed that. He is five three-pointers away from tying Auburn's all-time record. With 262, he's the guy who can knock him down in bunches. That's got to be Wesley Person that owns that. You it? are correct, sir. And that was off an offensive rebound. The best time to shoot a three. You're stepping into it. You're oftentimes not defended. White, how about the strength of that drive? And he draws a foul. We'll head to the free throw line. This is... The Maui Jim Maui Invitational, but it's not the only thing going on here during Feast Week. The Bad Boy Mowers Battle for Atlantis, another tremendous tournament, gets going tomorrow. you got a couple of ranked teams in Virginia and Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Florida in the second game. Really interesting matchup, Dayton and Butler. Four games coming your way Wednesday. As this tournament winds up, that tournament begins. That should be Wisconsin and Virginia playing for that. Uh, Virginia is outstanding with DeAndre Hunter back healthy and a year older in that backcourt with Kyle Guy and Ty Jerome. Virginia is a legit national championship contender and I think Wisconsin at number 25 is, is under ranked. I think they're better than that. White back to the bench. Reddish with two fouls back into the game as we pass the midway point of the first half. Harper listed at 5'11", and I'm willing to give him 5'9", no more than that. But he had a dunk. If you didn't see it in overtime yesterday, one of the one of the most impressive things you'll ever see. Uh, a guy his size could do that. There's a mi another miss way off is Horace Spencer. And that's, not his, that's not his game. He was excellent at the end of that Xavier game and in overtime, but that's not the shot that Auburn needs or wants. One, it takes him out of offensive rebound. Nice ball movement between Reddish and Barrett. Barrett misses the three, and it's out of bounds off Williamson. And Zion Williamson picking up that early foul. It's really kind of taken him out of the rhythm of the game. He needs to establish a little bit of rhythm in this one because he's so explosive. And, and as poorly as Auburn has shot the ball in this game, they're just 10 points down. You know, a couple of scores, a couple of stops. And they're right back in this thing. Yeah, Williamson has yet to score in this game, although he does have four rebounds. The back screen, there's a little flex action there. Here comes Brown, got Williamson on him. Can't shake him, shot clock running down. And a foul committed by Delorier. 
was right as the shot clock was just about to go out. It was foul was what about three or two on the clock and trying to break contact get around in front. Great instincts and a good idea but you just don't want to pick up a foul there. And put 30 seconds back on the clock. And a couple of the freshmen for Duke go to the bench now with Barrett and Jones as White comes back in. Also Jordan Goldwire, the backup point guard. Good Wiley help. wants it down on the post. Got White on him. Good help defense to discourage that by Cam Reddish at the start. Wiley got the shot he wanted. He just left it short on the jump hook. And Jack White has become such a good rebounder. He's physical, he gets good position, he sticks his nose in there, and he grabs the ball with two hands. You know, coming into the game today, Jay, he is third on the team in minutes played. He's become a very, very important part of this team. It was interesting to hear Mike Krzyzewski talk about this year wanting to elevate his role players, elevate the status of complementary play. Reddish. Boy, and Williamson just draws so much attention when they're worried he's going to drive. And he made a nice little feed off to the wing. Well, anytime you help off, there's somebody on the floor that can take advantage of you. But right now, the two guys that can are Cam Reddish and Zion Williamson. Auburn turnover. Duke numbers. Goldwire's open. And Reddish just picked up his third foul. And two, maybe all three of those fouls were unnecessary. But he's playing hard. It's just that those are freshman mistakes made by super talented freshmen. That'll cost him the rest of the first half. Kids not just playing ball. They're having a fun out here. They're, in air quotes, surfing. Some here people think that's fake. I can't believe they <laughs> can't would think that's why. ridiculous. What's up, dude, Blue Planet? We're here at this Mount Orientational Function. I just got my glasses. You know, y'all not ready to see my too much drip. My boy RJ was good. You know, just got, got me some new glasses, hey. baby. You know what I'm saying? Swag. Hey, Brittany, Brittany, what do you see? Yeah, you swag. know what's going on. What do you see there, Rob? Hey. A swag. Oh, shit. Joey? Swag. Hey, what you got for me, Alex? You got me? Swag. Swag. Go. Swag. Swag. <laughs> J Rob, let me see you. Let me see you again. Oh, one more time. One more time. San Antonio, Texas. Swag. <laughs> I love it. Hey, we out. We out. Too bad the kids aren't having any fun out here, huh? Yeah, it's a sad, sad story <laughs> that you have to go through all this. You look Too bad fantastic. We're not having it. Well, yeah. thank you. It's we're not having any fun notice. either. No, we're not having any fun at all. Can we be honest again next year, David? Is our boss in the tournament. truck? Is he listening? He's in the truck and he's listening? Wow. <laughs> one out of two usually is yeah, what we exactly. get. Yeah, we'll, t we'll happily take one out of two. Duke and Auburn here in the first semifinal at the Lahaina Civic Center. Don't go anywhere after this. We got Arizona and Gonzaga still to come in the second semi tonight. Auburn has not shot a free throw to this point in the game, largely because they have been taking nothing but jump shots. Wiley spins into the double team. Good help there by Williamson. Loose ball belongs to Duke. Boy, Zion Williams have did such a nice job of coming over on the baseline side from the weak side to double team. And Austin Wiley turned right into him and couldn't complete his post move. Auburn is shooting 22%, 6 for 27, 2 for 12 from 3. Trey Jones stopping on a dime and knocking down a 10-footer. Boy, does that look familiar? Looks very much like the way Tyus Jones used to step into a jumper as he did in the championship game against Wisconsin in that screen roll action that he took on so well. And another terrific rebound two-handed by Jack White. And again, the inability to knock down a three costs Auburn. Now two for 13 from beyond the arc as Wiley is called for the foul. They'll walk the floor for free throws. Auburn is a team that can really score. Now it's very early and they played a couple of teams that aren't very strong, but they're scoring 95 points per game. They got 14 points in almost 13 minutes today. And the problem is this Duke team scores so easily and so consistently. You are going to, if you're going to beat Duke, you are going to have to play really, really well on the offensive end in, de in addition to having a good defensive game plan and execute it. Wiley wants it and gets it. One-on-one -on -one with Delorier and turns it over. Barrett 
Williamson. And as happy as they are about the two points, all the Duke fans under that basket were hoping there was a dunk coming. I think that was his first bucket. You are correct. 31-14, first two points of the day for Zion Williamson. Okiki misses. But the follow is there. Offensive rebound and a putback, making it a 15-point game. Or really, one of the only times that Auburn is getting any offense is off an offensive rebound, and Duke has choked off most of those. There haven't been many second-shot opportunities, and Duke's first-shot defense has been excellent, but they've finished the possession by grabbing the defensive rebound. Williamson trying to get position in the post. Jones trying to find him. Forced it up with one oh. on the clock, and he hit it. Well, when nothing went right, and you had to throw one up there, still had the, the poise to make that shot. Impressive. Duke switching one through four, as you said, so Brown having trouble getting open. Okay, Good pass. Inside the Wiley. Those drives are going to be there. Take advantage of it. And really what Auburn has to start thinking about doing is spreading the floor more and using their shooting ability to set up some driving opportunities. But you have to keep the floor spaced. Offensive foul going against the Blue Devils. Moving screen. Well, we get the championship game tomorrow here for Maui, and then we lead into an NBA doubleheader, including LeBron James and the Lakers going back to Cleveland. LeBron in Cleveland. Interesting, obviously, at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Then OKC into Golden State at 10.30 Eastern time. We'll see if all the NBA folks who are here after the championship game here, if they find themselves in front of a TV to watch a little NBA before they head back to the mainland. LeBron put 50. A great pass. Boy, that was beautiful. Just a dribble at... They lifted up the Duke defense, and Malik Dunbar with a step and go. And a little run here from the Tigers to get back within 13, as poorly as they have shot it. Williamson does not get the roll. And Bolden, working hard on the glass, will be rewarded with a trip to the line. Now take a look right here, Dan. You'll see Malik Dunbar is right here, and we're going to see it's just a little step and go. He'll come up and then go. Beautifully executed. They lifted everybody up, got rid of weak side help so that Marquise Bolden would not be there, and just very well executed. And that's more of what Auburn needs to do. They need to spread the floor more and spread out these Duke defenders. If you're the Tigers right now, you can't shoot worse than you've shot. Are you encouraged because things you figure have to get better at some point? Or are you worried? Well, but if they happy? keep taking the shots they're taking, it can get worse because they'll stay where they are and Duke will keep moving out on them. I mean, you know, they've shown that they're capable. Malik Dunbar out of that timeout made a, made a nice shot that was on the left side of the floor because it was taken in rhythm. And they've forced a lot. They've been going a little bit, in my judgment, a little bit too fast. But this Auburn team is capable of, of some big numbers. And we saw it yesterday in their game against Xavier. They shot the ball horribly in the first half and came out in the second half and, and shot 50%. And so they're fully capable of doing that. But if they take better shots, they're going to have better rebounding coverage as well. And they're an excellent offensive rebounding team. Okiki. Quick three, not there. And a Barrett skies for the rebound. And Barrett can take it himself. Cradles it. And a foul is called. And Ted Valentine pointed to the basket, saying, in the act of shooting. So it'll be two free throws for R.J. Barrett. What do we come back? 3.58 to go in the first half. Duke by 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. The Duke, it'll be Arizona and Gonzaga in the second semifinal. The fifth place game is tomorrow at 2.30 Eastern time. That is Iowa State and San Diego State. 
And then the championship game, obviously, the winner of today's semis comes your way at 5 o'clock Eastern time, noon locally here on Maui. This for Duke will be the Blue Devils' 12th free throw. Auburn has yet to shoot a free throw. And Bryce Brown and Jared Harper right now have five points, a combined two of 13. And Auburn cannot win a high, you know, high value game like this without Brown and Harper putting up numbers. They're the engine that makes this team go. And right now, Duke is shutting them off completely. Yeah, again, they combined for 51 points in the win over Xavier yesterday. They've combined for just five points so far here in this one. Almost an offensive foul. Forcing it up with three on the shot clock. Big time shot by Bryce Brown. I mean, he needed that. He's being guarded by an excellent defender in Trey Jones. As Billis makes a play on the ball. That's my second play on the I ball. Know. I don't know if you saw when I was on the, uh, the football <laughs> show, the football ranking show right before this, and was giving expert analysis, and a ball came right at me, made the play, did not... You, know, you couldn't even tell I was no. making a play on the ball. It was really impressive. And I think a no-look pass, too, to get the ball back into play quickly. Incredibly athletic. Yeah. Just like when you played, you were forced to give it up as soon as you got it. Yes, yes. If I ever thought about shooting, Coach K mandated to call a timeout. <laughs> Barrett and Harper stays in front of him. And he stays low, moved his feet. Jones for three. And White keeps it alive. He has been terrific in the offensive glass this season. He's just getting extra possession for Duke after extra possession. Harper steps into a three. They needed that one, and it's down to single digits. And it started with Bryce Brown with a very difficult shot at the end of the shot clock. Now Auburn's starting to feel it. Well, as we've said, it's Harper and Brown, the upperclassmen, the veteran of backcourt that really make them go, and they have both just knocked down a three. And the first one at the end of the shot clock by Bryce Brown was huge. And then in transition, the pass ahead, and Jared Harper taking that in rhythm. And that was kind of the key for that shot. It was in rhythm. Doesn't matter that it was taken instead of taking the basket in transition. Threes in transition are good shots. But it, there was nothing forced about that shot. And now it's just a question of, of getting a stop and starting to get consecutive stops so that Auburn can put some scores together to get back in this game. You're not getting back in, obviously, by trading buckets. Williamson just two points in his 11 minutes so far. Does have four rebounds. Sat for a while after an early foul. Barrett with a baseline jumper too short. And a McLemore rips it down for the Tigers. Well defended by Bryce Brown, who's an excellent individual defender. Harper gets a switch, got a Bolden on him. Can he make something happen right now? If he gets by him, Bolden has to make him finish. And he blocked it. Williamson ahead to White. Oh, and a block at the other end by Dunbar. A really good sequence by both teams. But Marquise Bolden winds up on Jared Harper and made him finish the play. Didn't foul him out front, didn't grab him, didn't put his hands on him. Just made him finish at the bucket, blocked it, and that started a break. And Bolden ran the floor and wound up impacting the play at the end of it. Really good sequence by the big guy. And the foul is a big one because it's number three on Chuma Okiki. They've already got Dowdy on the bench with three, and now Okiki, one of their best players, has picked up his third. At least that's what we've been told. It has been... We have been told it's on Okiki, but Bruce Pearl's not taking him out of the game, and I think the officials are going to have a look at a replay here, or just they want to make sure that everybody's in agreement who the foul's on. It's obviously important. they got to know who it's on here. And they're going to, going to take a look at a replay monitor. They say it's on Okiki. I don't know what the... To me, if, you, if you're the official that called it, you should know. See, it, it looks like not it's Okiki. McLemore. It's McLemore, yeah. But, I mean, if the, the official that whistled it has to... 
It was either McLemore or Okiki wasn't even involved in the play. He was behind the play. It could have been Dunbar. Well, now, now we've been told it's Dunbar. Yeah, Dunbar was under the basket. Yeah. Either way, this is better for Auburn because Okiki did not pick up his third. He's still got two. It's the second on Dunbar. Some good minutes for Marquise Bolden in this game. Guy who you talked about it yesterday, the tour in Canada in August, he did not play well at all. But when Delorier was set back in practice in October with an injury, Bolden kind of got back into his starting role, played well, and he's continued in that role into the season. Big minute and a half here. Can Duke stretch the lead out? Or can, Har can Auburn get back into this and cut into this lead? Good fake. Tipped up and in. Terrific follow there by Anthony McLemore. Just getting middle. Jared Harper was able to get Marquise Bolden to help up a bit. That opened up the offensive glass for McLemore. McLemore with a block. He led the SEC in a blocks per game a year ago. Brown for three. This is the Auburn team we expected to see from the opening tap. Now this is about... Who's going to be tougher to get the score or get the stop? What a move by Williamson, and now Okiki has picked up his third foul. Boy, what a move by Zion Williamson. He just all does things that 280-pound guys don't do. All the, all the momentum taking him to his right, and he turns back to his left. But when... That opened up when Marque Marquise Bolden had to come up and help up and try to block that shot. And then McLemore on the other end with the block and Dunbar, another terrific pass ahead that led to that Bryce Brown three. Right now, when Auburn gets the ball back, they can get a two for one, which they should get. And which we saw them try to do in yesterday's game. Not, not a lot of college coaches actively go for that, but Bruce Pearl seems to be one who does. Mike Krzyzewski does, Bruce yeah. Pearl does, a number of coaches are doing it, and more, more should do it. And it's just... You can get two really good shots. Harper loops a pass back out. McLemore is going to get a look. And another follow, this time by Spencer. Now Duke can hold it for one. They didn't get, get the bucket in time for a two for one. About a two second difference. And another foul on Auburn. Just a reach by yep. Jared Harper, it looked like. No, I think they gave it to Dunbar, they? it looks like. And that's the third on Dunbar. So Dunbar, Okiki, and Dowdy. Three really important players to Auburn, each with three fouls. Well, Auburn has really fought back just to make this a, a two-possession game, now three. And it looked like it could get away. And Duke had moved this thing out going into halftime, but the Tigers really fought back, and they've made this a game again. The biggest lead was 17. It's at 7 right now. And can Auburn get a decent look? Harper's got quickness. He tried to throw it down with a left hand. No foul call. Auburn bench explodes in disbelief. And the first half comes to a close. But Jared Harper's not afraid of anything, is he? Not afraid of anything. 5-9 left hand traffic. Didn't matter, but didn't finish and didn't get a foul call. Let's take one more look quickly here. And did Williamson get him with the body? It probably depends which side you're rooting for. 
Kanoa Leahy is with Bruce Pearl. All right, Coach, a little surge from your team to close that first half. How important was that? I think we showed some character. Duke's a terrific basketball team. They're very well prepared. They hit us in the mouth, but the kids kind of regrouped. I know it doesn't look like much, but we kind of play a little crazy. We take some bad shots, but we make some shots, and we're in this. Dowdy, Okiki, Dunbar, all with three fouls. How do you manage that in the second half? Well, I'm disappointed in our defense. They're really good offensively, but we got away from the things that we wanted to try to do against them. I thought we settled down a little bit more late in the half, but we've got a good bench. we got nine guys. We'll play through the foul trouble. Thanks, Coach. Thanks to no one. We got a game, Duke by eight here in semifinal number one. Back to the studio for the halftime report along with Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams. Here's Adnan Burke. Welcome to Feast Week, presented by Lowe's. Make no mistake about it. We're good enough to beat them. We're good enough to beat them. And if you beat them, you make history. It lasts a lifetime. No one will ever take that away. He was fired up before the game. He was fired up in the first half. And his team got fired up late in the first half to make a game of it here for the semifinal. This is the Maui Jim Maui Invitational semifinal number one top ten matchup. Number eight Auburn, number one Duke. The Blue Devils led by as many as 17 at one point. But Auburn, after some dreadful shooting through really the first 15, 16 minutes of the game, they got hot. Their guards got hot. They got on the offensive glass. And they have made a game of it here for the right to go into the championship game against the winner of Arizona and Gonzaga. Welcome back to the Lahaina Civic Center. It is small, it is cramped, it is intense, and it is fantastic. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Kanoa Leahy in a moment got a game. Uh, Auburn played a lot better in the last four minutes than they did in the first 16. Well, they kept at it. They took some better shots, but they got some stops and were able to take it the other way, score a little bit in transition. And... You know, Auburn stayed in it on the offensive glass. It hadn't been a high turnover game, although some of Auburn's shots I would count as turnovers, and Auburn has not shot a free throw in this game. Zero for zero, and Duke has shot 18 free throws, or 13 of 18, and that's really been the difference in the game, the free throw line. It'll be Duke ball to get the second half started. Bear it to inbounder to Jones, and let's get some Duke reaction to the first half with Kanoa Leahy. Talk to associate head coach for Duke, John Shire, and he said the emphasis defensively in the second half has to be to continue to press up on Jared Harper and Bryce Brown. He said even though they missed a lot of shots throughout that first half, we need to continue to guard them. We started standing around and getting lazy. He said on offense, they'd like to get Zion Williamson a little more involved. They will do that by moving the ball back and forth and moving without the ball, getting back to that free-flowing offense that we have seen in this early season from the Blue Devils. All right, Kenoa, thank you. Keep in mind some foul issues as well as we start the second half Bolden with another block and here comes Duke four on one Barrett Man, how many times have we seen whether it's Williamson to Barrett or Barrett to Williamson that kind of a finish this year just in transition it doesn't matter to whom they get the ball you know the first pass out it can go to just it can go to just about anybody except for Marquise Bolden and they can start the break I'll tell you, Marquise Bolden is having himself a game. And he's doing all the little things. He is protecting the basket. He is helping on defense. He is rebounding, and he has finished plays. He tried to go up over the top, and he just went up and got that on the little runner by Bryce Brown. Four blocks already today for Bolden. We mentioned the foul situation. Cam Reddish has three for Duke, and a trio of Tigers have three, including two starters who are in the game right now in Dowdy and Okiki, who just missed the three. Uh, and Auburn keeps shooting threes. They're not going to shoot a free throw if they keep doing that. They've got to balance getting to the rim with taking good perimeter shots. Good ball movement. Bolden from Jones. Duke essentially playing four around one, that one being Marquise Bolden. And if you move the ball, he is always going to be open from some angle. And Duke with a steal. Reddish, before the shot, draws the foul. And how much game does Cam Reddish have? You've got to press up on him because he can knock down a shot from anywhere inside of 25 feet. And Samir Doughty picks up his fourth foul. Just a little spin move, goes baseline, gets a little bump with the body. 
So Dowdy's got to sit down. And Malik Dunbar comes off the bench. And Dunbar picked up three fouls in the first half. I don't think Tom Izzo would have liked that call. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't think Bruce Pearl liked it very much either. But your point is well taken about Coach Izzo. Duke with the first two buckets here for the second half to extend the lead to 12. I almost had Marquise Bolden on a switch where he had Jared, Jared Harper on him. Could have just lobbed that up to the rim, had an easy basket. Bolden hits the deck to retain possession, and it stays with Duke, ruled out off Okiki, five on the shot clock. Jumo Kiki needs to watch. He doesn't get hit with a back screen either from Reddish or Trey Jones here with when he's guarding Zion Williamson. There it is. Deep in the corner. Oh. Hold it again. My oh my. Look at the smile on his face. He's having a time of his life right now. Well, if you don't box out, that's the best. That's the best teaching device ever for not boxing out is getting dunked on because he didn't turn and put a body on somebody. Good recovery by Barrett. Brown can't get a shot off. Shot clock running down. Got it off in time. McLemore can't tap it home and it's Barrett off to the races. It's just a, a continuing highlight film. I have not seen the like of this team with four interchangeable parts on the perimeter and one big guy. It's remarkable. There may have been teams in the, the past several years that have been just as good, but they haven't been constructed quite like this. Here comes Barrett again. Reddish for three. And how many extra possessions has Marquise Bolden provided in this game for Duke? On both ends of the floor. Well, he is clearly healthier than the last couple of years. Nice bounce pass there from Harper to Okiki. A desperately needed bucket for Auburn. What Auburn really needs to have are consecutive stops. Well, step one maybe is getting him to play in half court instead of in transition where they're lethal. Reddish kept the toe down and missed the three. McLemore the rebound. Brown puts it on the deck and lays it in. A guy known much more as a three-point shooter with a nice drive. But he's capable of driving the ball. Very creative. And I think he needs to drive it a lot more. What a great environment, huh? A couple of buckets. The Duke fans sit down. The Auburn fans are on their feet. This building is so small and intimate and packed for every game of this tournament. And the energy is just infectious. All right, take a look here at Marquise Bolden. And then right here. And then Anthony McLemore right there. McLemore doesn't turn to box out. See, he just goes right after the ball, and Bolden just comes right over him for the easy two. And then Marquise Bolden tipping this ball back out to start the break. And he starts it to a finisher in R.J. Barrett. That's a big-time play by Marquise Bolden. He seems to like it, and he should. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge Black Friday savings. 
The Maui Jim Maui Invitational never fails to deliver. Semifinal number one, Duke and Auburn. Semifinal number two, we got it coming your way on ESPN about 30 minutes after this one. Arizona and Gonzaga. Third in the country, a, a team that a lot of people think has definite Final Four potential. Some say it might be Mark Hughes' best team, and that's saying something. That's saying something. I think it's a stretch, too. If they had Killian Tilly healthy all year long, maybe. But without him, I don't think that's a close call. Dowdy Dunbar, each with four fouls. They're both on the bench. Okiki is in the game with three. And now another Auburn foul. So Bruce Pearl's had to make an adjustment here, Jay, because not only did, do Dowdy and Dunbar both have four fouls, but they play the same position. One goes out, the other comes in. So Coach Pearl has gone bigger here, in effect, with Wiley and Spencer in the game together, but Okiki moving to the three spot. It almost doesn't matter who you have on Zion Williamson. When he comes in to set a little screen under the basket to free up a teammate, and then he decides he's going to post up, I mean, who's going to keep him from taking that real estate over? Reddish. And Barrett comes up with yet another offensive rebound for Duke. Duke has so many extra possessions in this game. It's just difficult for Auburn if they're going to give him this many chances. They're going to keep scoring a ton of points. One thing I don't get, there are new box scores that the NCAA has this year. <laughs> These box scores have plus minus. Yeah. Marquise Bolden has a plus minus of zero. That makes no sense. He's got 8.7 rebounds and four blocks. He's three of three from the field. How could he be zero in plus minus? Meaning, of course, that Duke has scored the exact same number of points as Auburn has when Bolden has been in the game. That makes no sense because yeah. he's been fantastic. Shot clock at two. Wiley gets it off and banks it home. Wiley's really good in, in screen roll situations. He sets a good screen. He moves his feet really well. He can really run. Boy, How do you lose him in yeah, transition? Seriously, that's the wrong guy to leave wide open. That's the first guy you have to find. And the Blue Devils faithful back to their feet across the court from us. Now the Auburn fans wanted to reach and foul on Jones, and they're standing. But Trey Jones puts such good pressure on the ball. He can make a, a ball handler like Jared Harper at times turn his back. And Harper draws the foul. This will be the first free throw shot by Auburn in this game. Crazy, huh? 26 minutes in. Jared Harper, as we mentioned, listed at 5'11", probably more like 5'9". And a second-team All-SEC performer last year. And Bruce Pearl says he's the barometer. When he plays well, they play well. And he played great for the most part yesterday. Again, Xavier had 25 points, 8 assists, 6 rebounds, and 3 steals against the Musketeers. You know, it's funny, Dan. Whenever, whenever you see free throw disparities, the first thing people think about is officiating. And I get that. But really, it's about style of play. And one of the reasons that the biggest reason that Auburn has not been to the free throw line before this is because they don't attack the basket or at least haven't in this game. They've been a, primarily a jump shooting team. Hanging around down a dozen. It was eight is at the half. It's been as many as 17. There's double stack low. Barrett off one side. Reddish off the other. Missed by Bolden, rebound Okiki. Good rebound and outlet. Wiley, he did a great job to discard Bolden, and he's headed to the free throw line. That's the first defensive mistake that Marquise Bolden has made. He tried to make a play on the baseline side. Now watch him as he's getting position. He go, tries to make a steal on the baseline side, and that just opens up a lane to the basket. R.J. Barrett was not right under the basket, which you can't always expect to have help side. You just want to stay between your man and the basket as a postman down there. And if Wiley catches it and has to make a turnaround jumper, that's fine. But you can't give him a layup. That could have been easily an end one. Wiley, one of the two players for Auburn, suspended last season in the midst of the FBI investigation. That saw former assistant coach Chuck Person uh, be relieved of his duties and indicted as well. D'Angelo Purifoy is the other player. He got nine more games. He is still serving his suspension. We'll be back in the middle of December. Reddish. 
Bolden trying to gather, lost it, and turns it over. Up top for the finish, Wiley running the floor. That's why Auburn needs to turn Duke over, whether it's on a, a rebound or loose ball, steal. They got to get easy baskets off their defense. Auburn making a little run, back-to-back -back buckets to get it down to eight. And a little run starts with a big, really running, <laughs> Austin Wiley running the floor. His mother, Vicki Orr, who could really run. His dad, Aubrey Riley, led the SEC in rebounding. One of the traditions here in the Valley is the free throw shooting contest for the coaches. A couple of days before the tournament begins, each of them is paired with a local youngster. And the winner this year was Eric Bover, the head coach of the Chaminade Silver Swords. Uh, coach Bover is the official host. This is the first year that instead of being in the main draw, Chaminade played a couple of games on the mainland. It went to San Diego State, it went to Arizona. They'll be back in the main draw next year. It'll alternate. And now Auburn, which didn't get to the free throw line at all in the first half, they've already gone four times here in the second half. Actually, Auburn had more free throw attempts in the free throw contest <laughs> at the hotel yeah. the other day than they've had in this game, but doing a much better job in the second half. Now, it's just a question of, as we mentioned before, continuing to get stops. A little bit of a zone look. Loader Barrett, short, follow Williamson. And when the middle guy, in that case Austin Wiley, steps up to try to block a shot, that really can open up the offensive glass, and it opened it up for Zion Williamson. Very balanced scoring for both teams. Barrett leads Duke with 13. Brown leads Auburn with 11. But Duke has done a very good job on Jared Harper, whether it's been Trey Jones or now R.J. Barrett. Harper got by him and then got the ball stuck on his hip and gets called for the travel. Take a look at Zion Williamson on this offensive rebound. Just on the inside and when Wiley steps up to block that shot, Chumo Kiki couldn't block him out by himself. Led to an easy bucket. And the man now for Auburn. R.J. Barrett can see right over the top of Jared Harper. And it's 6-7 over about 5-9. Williamson inside. And Bolden able to make that pass in the high-low action because he had zero pressure on him. Pull up by Okiki, around and out. Wiley creates a little space, got it back again. And has a chance for three. Austin Wiley has been terrific in this game. That's his 12th point. He's now 5 of 7 from the field, 2 of 2 from the line. Got 7 rebounds as well. Auburn not settling for threes as much as the second half, getting inside and making them count. Isn't this better than scouting? I'm a Bible hamstring. It's better than scouting. <laughs> and we don't have to listen to Walton. <laughs> his balance is bad, even in front of a green screen. At least he kept his shirt on, which <laughs> Bill Walton did not. <laughs> Bruce Pearl in his fifth season as the head coach of the Auburn Tigers took him back to the tournament in very high hopes for a talented and experienced team heading into this season. With more, here's Kanoa. Area was particularly uplifting. They were encouraged. There was a different vibe. They've cut the deficit to 10, possibly single digits. Well, with the Wiley miss, no. But they feel like they're in this game. Bruce Pearl didn't say much in that huddle. Let the players talk amongst themselves. They're getting ready for this final 12. You know, it's interesting, too, as Bruce Pearl said yesterday, and not a lot of coaches, I think, would speak uh, like this. He said, for this to be a successful trip, we got to get two wins. Now, you get three games, obviously, but... Win or lose, of course, there's another game coming tomorrow for both of these teams. Jared Harper saying, well, if we're going to play it, we might as well win it. Down to seven, Jay. And when they don't have to take the ball out of the net, when they get a stop, it's a heck of a lot easier to get a good shot on the other end. Auburn playing through some foul trouble in the second half as well, and they have narrowed the gap a bit. Barrett drills a, a three from the wing. A good pass by Trey Jones, cross court. Now, Barrett is a, a remarkable player. 
can get to the rim basically whenever he wants. And when he improves that shot, and it will improve, he's unguardable. Williamson fouled before the bucket. Man, he is a freight train at that size when he gets a full head of steam down the court. And finish that with his left hand. It is hazard. That was a... But he wrapped him up there. That's a... That's a flagrant, a flagrant foul. Yeah. It is a flagrant foul. Yeah. And the, I don't know if the referees are going to go look at that. But that was not a play on the ball. There's no question that would be a flagrant one. Excessive and unnecessary. And they've been told, the, the officials have been told, it's a point of emphasis to call those as flagrant ones. But it is ruled a common foul before the shot, so Duke ball. Duke runs its out-of-bounds plays basically out of the same alignment. They run different actions, but you don't know what's coming because they run the same alignment. Spencer guarding Williamson. Oh, man. They just decided that yeah. they were going to isolate Austin Wiley and let Zion Williamson go one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, that took some guts. Horace Spencer went up to try to block that, and that took some guts. Well, Spencer did his job. Yeah, he committed a foul, but he prevented a dunk. What would you do? Serious question. You're trying to guard Williamson. He's on the wing. You know he can shoot a little bit. You know he can drive. How do you play him? How do you try to slow him down when he's got the ball? Well, you got to try to force him right uh, as often as you can because he's a left-hand dominant player. But, you know, the truth is you can't guard him. One-on-one -on -one is going to be difficult to guard him because if you're smaller, he can back you in. If you're bigger, he can just go right by you. And then at the end, he can go over you and stay over you. Yes. <laughs> Ball screen to try to free up Harper. Got the switch. Open to man, Wiley, 15-footer. Well, he shot at 17, but he banked it in. He is a good big guy out of pick-and-roll situations. But really good feet. He's going to get better and better. You know, he just got back. He's only played a couple of games. And Auburn continues to hang around down by eight, the same as it was at halftime. Gonzaga, Arizona still to come in the second semifinal. And now a foul that Chuma Okiki regrets as he picked up his fourth. And as we mentioned, Arizona playing in the next game. The Wildcats will take on the number three team of the nation, the Gonzaga Bulldogs, in the other semi. One guy with four fouls. Dowdy comes in to replace another guy, Okiki, with four. Bruce Pearl told Kanoa going off the court at halftime. We got nine guys. We'll play through the foul trouble. We'll figure it out. And they're having to get pretty creative right now. Now Horace Spencer with his size and length on the ball, making it difficult for Trey Jones to see in because there was a switch, and Zion Williamson was being guarded by Dowdy. But the ball was deflected. And now they changed up their assignment. Spencer went to Williamson, Wiley on Bolden. Better matchups for Auburn. Well, he was on him before. Wiley yeah. was on him before, but he got caught in a switch. They force him right. Too strong off the glass, and it's out of bounds to Duke. With three seconds left on the shot clock, the ball did not hit the rim. That was just one big guy setting a ball screen for another right around the elbow. Marquise Bolden setting that ball screen for Williamson. you got to watch Barrett setting a screen right now for Williamson and see if they're going to try to throw a quick lob. Barrett from the corner. What a rebound. And a fresh 30 now for the Blue Devils. Well, it's easy to pick up fouls where you got to play 60 seconds of defense. And Auburn gets the stop they needed. Williamson kind of let him off the hook with that shot. And Williamson the foul at the other end. 
Thought Williamson shot that ball too early in the clock. He could have gotten that any time instead of giving yourself an opportunity to pick up another foul in that. Now he's behind trailing the play there on that lob from Harper. Wound up picking up a, another foul. The Blue Devils 4-0 on the season. A blue out Kentucky in their first game. They get a battle from Army. They were up six with about 12 minutes left. Uh, had a much easier time against Eastern Michigan and then beat San Diego State by 26 yesterday. They have trailed for a total of 35 seconds so far this season. They gave up the first basket in their second, third, and fourth games and then immediately came back to tie and eventually took the lead and not trailed at all today. But this is the toughest test they have had so far this year. Now, Auburn is a really good team and they're going to get a heck of a lot better, especially when they get D'Angelo Purifoy back after the ninth game. Purifoy at 6'8 can really shoot the ball. Barrett dips the shoulder a little bit. No call. Offensive rebound, Bolden, and there's a the call as he'll head to the free throw line. I think Bruce Pearl is looking at the official saying, wait a minute. Like, how did Barrett knock my guy back? And that's not an offensive foul. What a rebound by Marquise Bolden. He has had just a fantastic game. Is this the best you've seen him play in his time at Duke? Yes. In this kind of game, yes. Eight points, eight rebounds, four blocks. As now McLemore returns, and Wiley, who's played very well today, gets a breather. Here come the Zags, Josh Perkins and company. As the Zags are in the house to take on Arizona, program two programs pretty familiar with one another. They played a couple of years ago. They'll have a home and home starting next year. And if you have not seen Rui Hachimura, there are about 25 NBA executives in the gym today, and Hachimura is very high on their list. Hachimura is 6'8". He's really athletic, and he can do a lot of different things on the floor. He can handle the ball. He can pass it. Very, very skilled. He's averaging about 23 points a game. Nice pass. Reddish might have altered it just a bit. Dowdy. And a foul call. No, it's a held ball. A held ball is the call. Not going to be a held ball when the ball flew out. I mean, I know they called that. Yeah. But... Yep, there it is. Possession arrow keeps it with the Tigers. Wasn't held for very long, but <laughs> it was. A briefly held ball. Auburn down by eight and a bucket away probably from sending their fan base into a frenzy. Good matchup there for Jared Harper to have Jack White on him. White was trying to give him some space. He just pulled up. White worried, worried he was going to go around. Jeez, Cam Reddish. How he was by that? the yellow line. <laughs> How do you defend that six feet beyond the arc? You get up in him, but then he can go by you. Holy cow, that was... That had to be 28 yeah. feet. Harper, short, reddish the rebound, and here they come with Barrett. Knocked out of bounds, and it stays with Duke with 7.43 to go here in the second half. Auburn hanging in there. But they have got to get consecutive stops. Jared Harper pull, pulling up and drilling a deep one. And Cam Reddish saying, I see your deep one, and I raise you this deep one. <laughs> Welcome back to Maui, the Maui Jim Maui Invitational. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Kanoa Leahy, semifinal number one, Duke and Auburn in as expected, a very intense affair, and one of the best performances Marquise Bolden has had in a Duke uniform. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has talked about elevating his complimentary players, and Marquise Bolden fits into that category, but he has been more than a complimentary player in this one. Nine points, eight rebounds, five offensive rebounds, three of four from the field, and four blocked shots, and over his last 19 games, He's shooting over 70% from the field. Yet, with all that, Dan Showman, that Marquise <laughs> Bolden has done in this game, his plus-minus is minus five. Right. That shows you that this plus-minus box is meaningless in these new NCAA box scores. I can't meaningless. Wait. I can't wait to read your column on ESPN.com about it.
about it. And it will be very wordy. <laughs> Stolen away by Dowdy. Brown lost it on the dribble. And then a foul is called on Spencer. Boy, a missed opportunity there in transition for Auburn. And you can see the frustration on the face of Bruce Pearl. And there haven't been a ton of turnovers in this game. I stick with my earlier point that I think some of the shots that Auburn took, especially in the first half, were essentially turnovers. And there are times when you could take a bad shot, and that bad shot winds up being the first pass in your opponent's, opponent's fast break. And I think that's what we've seen, at least in the first half here. Jones makes one of two. Just the fourth ever meeting between the Blue Devils and the Tigers. Duke leading 3-0. The last one was in 1981. And again, Auburn trying to get a chance to knock off the number one team in the nation. That shot was big. It's down to six. Well, he can get hot in a hurry. And a foul on the drive. Trey Jones has a little bit more of a burst of speed maybe than people give him credit for when he decides to try to get into the lane. He's he's bigger than his older brother Tyus and a little bit stronger at this stage of his career. He's not necessarily the same kind of pick and roll shooter that I think Tyus was, but Trey Jones is really good. And because R.J. Barrett and Cam Reddish and Zion Williamson are one, two, and three in their class, I mean, it's not like Trey Jones is any slouch. What was he ranked 17th yeah. in his class? Yeah. And I'm no slouch myself. <laughs> Back to eight after a couple of made free throws. Seven minutes to go. Oh, Brown had a look and oh. he took too long. Williamson got him. What a block by Zion Williamson. He's quick off the floor to be able to get that. Barrett can't turn the corner. Brown stays with him. Williamson. Again, how do you stop it when a guy that big can spin that quickly? You don't. There's a little bit of contact there. The referees didn't call it, but unless you have help coming over to stop that spin and be sitting right there, you're not going to stop it. McLemore follows up the miss. And a foul underneath going against Williamson. Duke. I think it's Williamson. Yeah. yeah. It's almost like a, one of these undercut fouls. His third. On the switch, Zion Williamson caught a little bit behind the play and still was able to recover and block that and then keeping it off a little dribble handoff and spinning into the lane, spinning to that left hand. It's so difficult. Dowdy will probably pop up to the elbow here and get a screen. Nope. He's going to try to get Wiley inside. Just take it. And I think Barrett got a hand on it, knocked it out of bounds. It still belongs to Auburn. He had the middle. You just got to go to the middle. You're, you're spinning back in to a defender, that being R.J. Barrett there. And if you see Barrett, then you got to hit the corner. There, there, there's what I thought they would run the first time. And the tie-up is called. The arrow will turn it over to Duke. And guess who's on the floor? It's Jack White. The junior from Australia again has surged into a much bigger role for the Blue Devils this year. And you can hear by the ovation he's getting as he comes out of the game right now. All the, the little hustle stats, offensive rebounds deflections, those sorts of things. He's been doing all of that so far this year for Duke. He's terrific against San Diego State. He had 12 points, 8 rebounds. Defended really well. That's the third time that I think Bruce Pearl's got a complaint on an R.J. Barrett move where he used his off arm to push the defender back. 
And Barrett a bucket away from his fifth 20-point game in five games. Wiley with a strong finish. Well, I think the officials missed a foul there. I thought that initially that was a foul. You know, Auburn wound up getting the getting the, uh, the stick back with Wiley. But what a terrific play by Chumo Kiki and a little back cut. But right now Harper drawing the assignment of Barrett. Giving up a ton of size right now. Reddish thought about it. Barrett steps into a long two. Not there, but the rebound down to Doughty. Five minutes to go. Ten-point game. Another block for Bolden, his fifth. And how about that? Reward the big fella for running the floor. Well, he demanded it by running the floor. Gets the block on one end and finishes at the other. Now there's a switch. Zion Williamson on Harper. Harper goes by him and Bolden with another one. His sixth. They are making Jared Harper finish at the rim. And at 5-9, they feel like it's advantage Duke, and they've proven it, especially with Marquise Bolden blocking shot after shot after shot. Bolden with 11, 8, and 6. 11 points, 8 rebounds, 6 blocks in this game. Williamson turns it over. Brown banks it home. Nice little jump stop and hesitation. Yeah, the hesitation was the key. Just change speeds on the defense. He's got a lot of game. That was just about getting stops. Auburn has not been able to get consecutive stops, and Duke's been able to hold him at bay as a result. And that clock keeps on ticking. A turnover, though. Brown fouled by Jones. Still no bonus, though. But a timeout on the floor with 3.31 to go. The seasoned old man, Marquise Bolden, with his... Block on one end, he's got six blocks, he runs the floor, tossed it up the other end. Pretty good sequence for the big guy. It's been around a while. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau and VisitMaui.com. To the Lahaina Civic Center. Duke up by 10 on Auburn with three and a half to go here in semifinal number one. And as we push to that mural if we could see through that mural we would see the locker room where they're getting ready for semifinal number two the Zags are in the house the number three ranked team of the nation will take on the Arizona Wildcats even without the injured Killian Tilly with the likes of Hachimura and Perkins uh, and so many other good players they're just so deep and they always have transfers they always have upperclassmen Mark Hughes got himself a really, really good team. Yeah, Brandon Clark transferred in, who is a, an excellent athlete, a lot like Jonathan Williams was last year. Jonathan Williams now with the Los Angeles Lakers. And every team in these behind the Civic Center locker rooms is a close team. Those are not big locker rooms. <laughs> Wiley, who's had a big day for Auburn, 17 points, 9 rebounds. Auburn has trailed by as many as 17. They got it down to five at one point here in the second half. Wiley and Bolden with yet another one. Are you kidding? Bolden out playing ball screen defense and got back to block that shot. What a steal by Okiki. And Auburn has to capitalize on getting the ball back. And right here, right now, if they want to win this game, they got to get a score. This is a big possession. Harper, yes! What a tough shot over Jones! Which was well defended. I mean, Trey Jones forced a difficult shot. That was just great offense overcoming really good defense. The Blue Devils getting a... For Dowdy. Double bonus. Dowdy's fifth. Yep. So Dowdy, the transfer from BCU, really important guy on this team, but 
Just could never get in sync. Only played 13 minutes because of all the foul trouble today. Having to guard all these drives, you know, when you chest up, body up, and you don't have the angle, you're going to get a foul called on you. Cameron comes to Hawaii a little bit. It's not as intimidating when only 40 people do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. The, this arena is great. It's just oh, so it's good for this event. It, it's it's hard to know how you know how it comes across on TV about how intimate it is, but just how noisy it is. Even though there are only what 2,400 people, I think 2,400 people. How noisy it is. It's the final four in a high school gym. Yeah, it's I mean, that's exactly basically what it is. What it is. You're yeah. never going to get a better view of the players than you get here. And then you walk outside and you're in paradise. Yep. And they do such a great job. The Duke fans behind the Duke bench, the Auburn fans behind the Auburn bench. And even though there's only 30 minutes before the next game, they clear the gym out and then they bring them back yeah. in. You buy tickets what separately. A steal. Yeah, it's the final four in a high school gym with fish tacos. <laughs> you should put that on a, a business card or something. Or a t shirt. Yeah, yeah, or a t shirt. People don't buy business cards like they used to. Bolden runs again. it down. Man, what a game. Ninth rebound to go with 11 points and seven blocks for Marquise Bolden. Now Duke can run some clock and then attack the last 12 seconds of the shot clock. Calling for a high ball screen from Bolden. Jones lost it. Tapped ahead by Harper. Falling down Brown and Barrett grabs Wiley. Bruce Pearl saying that's a flagrant got his arms crossed and we'll see if they have a look at it. They won't they missed the flagrant in the first half. And it looks like they missed it here. I love the effort though here. Yeah, this one yeah. seemed a little bit different. It was, a, it was a slap down and then just a grab of the arm. The, the first one that they missed was there's no question. It, yeah, that was flagrant that's too. A flagrant. You're right. Yeah. That is flagrant. The aftermath really I think yep. is where you, yep. where you see it. But yeah I think. Uh, I think this crew is going to hear about those two. And it's a big call, obviously. It's They're two both big the calls. Ball. They're yeah. both big calls. Yeah. They missed one that should have been called on Duke. It was uh, Samir Doughty that grabbed. And then this one, R.J. Barrett grabbed. So this, the officials get 90% of them right, but those two were in the 10%. Williams should have backed in for Boulder. And listen to the ovation he gets. Might not be big enough. He was fantastic. I thought just his effort, you know, to block a shot, run down, get a basket, run back on deep for the big man to work that hard, playing more minutes than he's played in a game this year. Really impressive. Yeah, and Mike Krzyzewski had talk about, had talked about playing Marquise Bolden in shorter stretches. You know, to keep him fresher so he could go hard for the entire period. But he played longer stretches at a higher motor than I've seen in a long time for him. He played great. And a couple of missed free throws for Wiley. Dunbar with a foul to put Reddish on the free throw line, and that'll be it for Dunbar today. Arizona waiting for its opportunity to take the court. The Wildcats, a different looking bunch, obviously, lost all five starters, lost all but one of their recruits in the wake of the FBI investigation. Brandon Williams, freshman point guard, decided to stay. Well, he opened up his recruitment again, but then eventually decided to, to go to Tucson. This is a a different looking Arizona team and program right now and they're going to get all they can handle obviously from Gonzaga and given up less than 60 points per game on the season and uh, the highest scoring team that has put up a number on them has been Iowa State scoring only 66 so the defense for Arizona has been very good it's going to have to be really good against Gonzaga that this Gonzaga can really score. The Dunbar fouls out. That's why we have the brief delay. Get a little bit of time to decide who the fifth player is. They also have to clean some perspiration off the court. Dowdy, Dunbar both out. Just a minute 34 to go. And Duke up by nine with a good shooter with the free throw line. Well, you can't overstate how unusual it is to have a team like Duke that can have four different guys get a defensive rebound and start the break. And this is a, a team that's lethal in the full court, lethal in transition.
Harper. Another wow. tough three. <laughs> man, this kid's a baller, yeah. man. He is a baller. Nothing, nothing phases him. He is all of 5'9". And I think Jared Harper at 5'9", maybe 5'. Let's give him 5'10". And Chris Clemens of Campbell are the two best under six foot players in the country. They're going to be battling it out for that Francis Pomeroy Naismith Award for the top player in the country under six feet. And now for our plays of the game, driven by Continental Tire. Well, it's been the block shots and the rim protection of Marquise Bolden blocking that with the left hand. Two with the left hand. That one with the left hand. And one with this one with the right hand. And he runs the floor, gets the lob, puts that right hand up to show he's ambidextrous with his shot blocking. <laughs> what a game. Yep. In many ways, a career game for Marquise Bolden. Everybody says it's a guards game, please. <laughs> I'm going to channel Bill Wolf. It's not a guards game, please. It's the big man. Auburn comes up with a steal. Will Harper try to take Reddish this time. Reddish got his hand in there, knocked it out of bounds. Still Auburn ball. Not an easy place on the floor from which to inbound. I don't think Auburn needs to settle for a three here. I think they can get something going toward the basket and then get the defense to collapse and kick it out for a three. Fine. But I say you attack the basket here, get a score, make it a two possession game, put a little more game pressure on Duke. Tonight, after the second game, Arizona Gonzaga, stay tuned for Sports Center. Complete post game coverage of both games. How Drew Brees is making NFL history. And then, of course, the game we were talking about tomorrow night as part of our. ESPN NBA doubleheader LeBron heads back to Cleveland as the Lakers take on the Cavaliers. LeBron put 51 on the, the Heat, one of his former teams. How much do you think he wants to put on Cleveland? Oh. What do you think the emotion will be like in the building for Cavaliers fans? Just, you know, torn between what he did for them and then leaving them for the second time. Yeah, they shouldn't be torn. Hey, bring, in a, bring in a championship and all yeah. he did for Cleveland. There's nothing to be torn about. What about this one here? Uh, the toughest test the Blue Devils have got. Not what have you learned about them. What do you think they have learned about themselves so far? Well, that they've got more than just this super talented freshman class. I think they knew that already. But, you know, this is a, a stern test. But I don't think Auburn, for, it's tough to get the ball inbounds. Auburn does not have to go for a three here. But they have to go quickly and get something. Brown frees himself for a three. Would have been big. Would have been big, but instead, as he shows some visible frustration after the miss and an Auburn a foul, and that may signal the end of any realistic hope they have here to pull this game out. Yeah, and I think that that's why you, know, you think, hey, attack the basket. If you can kick it out for a three, that's a different kind of shot. And you want to get a score, be able to set up some full court pressure, you know, make it a two possession game. Auburn hit 10 threes with 31. I mean, they, you know, that's a lot of that's a lot of attempts, but it's the it's the quality of attempt that they got throughout the game. Second half much better. You know, first half they gave away a lot of possessions. Wildcats waiting. Zags waiting. And that game 30 minutes after the conclusion of this one. Round driving this time and rejected by White. What is that like 10 or 12, 11 blocks for Duke in this game? Where the rim protection has been incredible. 11 is the number, seven of them belonging to Bolden. And again, Brown and Harper not big guards, and they just face so much length at so many moments in this game, and the Blue Devils are going to advance to the championship. Barrett for three. And it didn't hit the rim, so it's a shot clock violation, but it's all academic now with just 16 seconds to go. 
Auburn is a good basketball team. With Dangel Purifoy back and as Austin Wiley gets more time, it's going to be a dangerous team throughout the course of the year. SEC is going to be fun, isn't it? Oh, man, yep. what a good league. Final seconds. I'll tell you, he's got that one down to a science, Jay. That is uncanny. He's just a player. How is he ever? That kid is a baller, man. They fought hard. They they hung around, but in the end, Auburn falls to Duke 78-72. As the Blue Devils move to 5-0 and and advance onto the championship game tomorrow against the winner of our next semifinal between Arizona and Gonzaga. The Wildcats and the Zags are still coming. So catch your breath, grab something out of the fridge, and then come on back and join us. We've got more great basketball coming from the Maui Gym, Maui Invitational here in Lahaina. Wildcats and Zags coming up. Coach K with some thoughts for the Auburn players in the aftermath of this six-point victory. Let's send it back to the studio again. College basketball scoreboard at Man, Seth, and Jay. What were you reading in on their takes to the basket? Uh, really just helping my teammates. I mean, we protect each other uh, when I talk, and uh, that's what I did today. How much of a test was this for your team? Uh, definitely a big test. I mean, it's the best team we played so far. So for us to come out and win a game like we did, it was good. In games like this where there's a bit of a challenge to be endured, teams often learn a little bit more about themselves. What did you learn about your team here in this game? Uh, that we have a will to win. I mean, it's tough coming off a game we played yesterday to come back and play a tough team the next day. So for us to come out and, like I said, win this game today, it shows a lot. This environment here at Lahaina Civic Center, it is intimate, but it is loud. A lot of the Blue Devil faithful making the trip here out to the islands. What is this environment like from the players' perspective? Uh, it means a lot. I mean, it's energetic, uh, much like our home court, Cameron. And uh, we're just glad our fans made the trip and they, they was able to come see us win. All right, so you're like the Wiley veteran here on this team. You got all these freshmen, they're getting all this attention. You're the Wiley vet. How have you embraced your role with these guys? Uh, really just trying to teach the young guys like things that I wish I knew when I came in. Uh, obviously, they're real talented, uh, real smart, so I just try to, you know, teach them everything I wish I knew. Great game, Marquise. Thank you. Thank you. This wasn't a game against Auburn that Duke won with its offense. Duke won this with its defense, and the defense was really keyed by Marquise Bolden, who had 11 points, nine rebounds, and seven block shots. And a number of those blocks, Dan, it wasn't just he was standing under the basket protecting the rim. He might have been out guarding a ball screen and had to get back to the rim to block a shot, to come over from the weak side. He ran the floor extraordinarily well and played big minutes. It wasn't like he was playing small stretches throughout the course of the game. But in a game where offense was difficult because Auburn was good defensively, Duke won this game with its defense. And you saw on a number of occasions today just a huge smile on the face of Marquise Bolden. He couldn't help himself. He's healthier, running the floor well, having fun, and helping his team advance to the championship game. The guys are fun. They smile all the time. <laughs> with some exceptions. <laughs> 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 okay. With some exceptions. Yeah. One notable.